You ready? Go, bro. Welcome to another vlog. It is actually Saturday morning right now and we have a very special thing that my wife and I are doing. We're gonna head out to a ski resort out here in Ontario called Blue Mountain later in the day so you might see a little bit of action that way. But I did get a call from a fellow plumber out there named Ryan. You've met Ryan before in plumbing school and Ryan asked me if I could help him install back water valve inside his brother's house. Now here's the thing you have to know. His brother ended up finding out that a couple of houses down the street they ended up having water come up in the basement and this back water valve is a preemptive measure to make sure that that doesn't happen if you don't know what a back water valve is let's go into the studio really quickly okay peeps so for this video I'm gonna need three different materials the first thing is is this bad boy right here this is the actual back water valve that we're gonna be installing I'm gonna show you its function in a second this bag right here is gonna be crucial at the end of the video but it's not installed in this video but I'll tell you a little bit a bit more we're also gonna need two Fernco's these are gonna be four inch clay to four inch ABS Fernco's the reason why there's such a large difference in size is because the outside diameter of clay is quite large in comparison to ABS as you can see right here and then this right here is actually the box that you put on top of the back water valve in order to make sure that you can now cement everything and the back water valve will be intact and when you need to service it you could actually just unscrew these guys right here access the valve and then you can put the lid back it should be flush with the cement by the end of the installation so peeps a back water valve is a valve that has one direction of flow now the whole intention of this is to put this on the main line going out to the sewer outside. And the reason why you put this on the main line is because this is a normally open valve. But I wanna show you what happens when water starts to flow in the reverse direction of flow than it is normally intended. So inside this valve is a little trap door essentially. It's a one-way valve. And what happens is, is when flow goes in the appropriate direction of flow, which is towards us, water will touch this valve, it'll open that door, and water will continue to flow out the other way towards the sewer. However, if water starts to come back in the reverse direction of flow, what happens is this door will eventually be pulled back right up to the top and now shut so that water cannot flow back into the house anymore. So that's what a backwater valve is, that's what it does, and we're gonna be putting this in in order to make sure that the entire house, and especially the basement, is protected from this sort of surcharge, which means that we're gonna be breaking, we're gonna be installing, we're gonna be having an amazing Saturday, am I right? And then we get to go out and do a little bit of skiing if we have luck on our side. So peeps, let's get to work, let's have some fun. Oh, and by the way, peeps, you know what to do, baby. Let's go do some delicious plumbing.
Peeps, I wanted to talk to you quickly about an interesting application that we've run into in the past with this sort of backwater valve that we've installed inside a building. Now in this video you're watching right here, we're installing it for a one family dwelling. And what that means is there's only one family living inside this house right here, which makes it really important when you think about the application and the installation itself. Because if anything starts to happen, like they start to see water come out of the basement floor, what the family will do is essentially put in the other preemptive measures, which is not run any water in the house because they know that by running water, they're adding to the load and that load isn't going out into the sewer. It's actually coming up into their basement. So everybody's going to stop running water altogether. So in this regard, it makes a lot of sense to actually install a backwater valve on the main like we did in this video right here. Now we once installed a backwater valve inside a commercial slash residential unit. What that means is the bottom level was commercial. I think it was a daycare that we were installing a backwater valve on, but above was residential units and multiple ones. I think it was split into two or three different units. And when the inspector came in, we had installed the backwater valve on the main and the inspector asked us to take it out. And I think this is a really important conversation as to why, because it made a lot of sense once he explained it to us. So what happens is, is when the sewer gets overloaded, it starts to fill up with water. And once it starts to fill up with water, it starts coming back into the house. And this backwater valve will essentially stop the water from coming back into the house if it activates correctly. But if you're dealing with a commercial unit and a residential unit above, the residential unit and the unit below aren't in conversation with each other, so they have no idea what's happening with the water downstairs. So what will occur is, is these units above will continue to run water. So they'll run water through their vanity and it'll start going down the stack and it'll start filling up on the inside, now remember this valve is completely shut. No water is going out and no water is coming in because on the other side of this valve, it's completely filled with water. So getting water to push through is not going to happen. So it can only go to the easiest way out, which means it'll start filling up the bottom floor. It'll start coming out of the water closet. It'll start coming out of the vanity. Before you know it, you're gonna have a flood in your basement, not because the valve didn't activate, but because because it did activate and the rest of the people in the building do not have any conversation about it. Whenever you're dealing with multiple dwellings for different families, you actually have to install this valve differently and I want to show that to you right now. So because of the mess that it can occur if you install it on a main line for a multiple dwelling unit, what you have to do instead, completely take it off of the main and simply protect just the basement. And this is how you would protect it. So in the basement here, I've roughed in a powder room. So instead of putting it where it was before, we would then opt to put it on the branch inside the basement so that once the water starts filling up from the street, as soon as it hits that branch, it gets stopped by the back water valve. And then in conjunction, if people are still running the water through the stack, then it also is protected from that situation as well. So you get the best of both worlds. But that also means that at some point this stack is going to fill up and then the second floor will actually get filled up and eventually water will start coming out. And that's another question you're gonna have to ask. A lot of times you only protect the basement floors because they're the first people to see the water and also because it takes a really long time and a large volume of water to eventually get up to the second floor. And by that time, usually the manhole is able to unclear itself, but in some cases it doesn't, so you're still taking a risk. But that's why you would opt to actually change the location of the backwater valve and where it's installed. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk to you all about is actually this guy right here. This is the bladder I was showing you earlier that I didn't initially install on this backwater valve. And to be honest, it's the first time that we needed to. I have passed in 
inspections in the past without this. It is a preemptive measure and it is suggested. So this bladder right here protects about against radon, water table, bugs and insects, lower tests, air leakage, debris, sand, gravel, etc. And this is exactly why Ryan eventually actually put this in at a later time. I'll try to show you some pictures at the end of this video. So as you can see, the water table is coming up constantly and this is a perfect application for that because you don't want the water table water, which is the storm water, to start getting into this. So we opted to put this in at a later point. It's not shown in this video, but we did get it done and it did pass inspection. So we are in good shape. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you do get one of these, start thinking about whether it's useful for debris sand or water table water, etc. And it could be good even for bugs and insects. So overall, it might be something that I start putting into every application from now on. Let's get back to the video. Alrighty peeps, that's it for me. Just another day in the life of a plumber. Like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby. How was it for you? Good, good. Good, good.